Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're gonna to be working on the Mustang. We put a new carburetor in it a few weeks ago, and now it's time to tune it to get it running right. Pretty much right out of the box. Without touching anything, the carburetor worked fine. But there's always some room for adjustment on them. And that's what I wanna to do today. So we're gonna take the car out for a drive, and then we're gonna take a look to see what adjustments I should make based on how the car is responding. We're gonna use an air to fuel gauge, which is on the center of the dash on the steering column that we can watch to see how the car is performing and to figure out how we're gonna be adjusting it to make it run better. Now what we're gonna be adjusting is we're gonna be adjusting a few different things. We're probably gonna end up adjusting the idle mixture screws a little bit based on how it idles. I think I got it close enough before, but probably need to make a little bit of a change. And then uh, based on how the car runs, we're gonna end up doing some other adjustments. Now, one of the important things to do and to understand before we take it out for our cruise is how the carburetor works. So we're gonna take a look on the carburetor that we took off up here. We're gonna go through this and we're gonna talk through just the basic functionality before we start tuning this one. Now, why it's important that we understand how the carburetor works before we go for our cruise is because what I want you to do is, as you're driving, you wanna visualize how the carburetor's functioning and what systems you're running off of as you're driving. So you're sitting in a stoplight, you're running off the idle mixture screws. You're leaving that stoplight, you're taking an accelerator pump shot, and then you're transitioning to the main jets. You're cruising down the road. While you're cruising down the road, you're on the main jets, and then you're with the power valve open. One of the things I'd recommend as you're tuning your car is to add a vacuum gauge in the interior. Even if you're running a temporary one, just run something inside so they can see how much vacuum's on the engine to understand kind of what's the current status of that power valve. Is it open, is it closed, and how the car is running. Also, if you have an air to fuel gauge, it's much easier because you know exactly how the car is performing. Okay, so here's the carburetor we're gonna be talking about. This is a Holley 750 double pumper. You know, the mechanics and everything of them are exactly the same, so there's not gonna be much of a difference between how this one works and how the one in the car works. So no fuel left in it, which is good. Okay, so we'll walk through the process of essentially how the car is gonna run. So after you're idling, your choke is open, throttle blades are closed, you're idling. You're off of the four corner idle mixture screws in the Holley carburetor. As you start accelerating, you can see, so you're accelerating off of a stop sign. You can see the accelerator pump giving a little bit of fuel that's helping the carburetor transition from idle mixture screws to main jets. So while we're drive, while we're at the stop sign, idle mixture screws, little bit of throttle, main jets start as you work through the transfer slots. Okay, now that we've walked through the normal functions of the carburetor, let's go ahead, let's take the car for a drive and see how everything's functioning, see what we need to change on the carburetor itself. So the first thing I notice is the car is actually idling pretty well. It's a little bit on the lean side. It probably like get closer to 13 to one, but it's okay where it is. Now as I'm cruising just a light cruise as I was typically driving like 30, 40 miles per hour, the first thing I notice is it's still pretty lean. So we're talking about 14 to 15 to one, which is way too lean for this engine. So this tells me I need to adjust either the primary side jets or I need to adjust the power valve. Assuming that the power valve is already open and giving its fuel, I need to open up the main jets and go to a few sizes larger. So now we're gonna start working on the carburetor now that everything is cooled off. Now to get to the primary side main jets, I'm actually going to drain the gas out of this. Then I'm gonna pull this forward and be able to get to this metering block. Now, I always use one of these paint caps to capture as much of the gas as I can. Now with all that fuel drained, I can go ahead and remove these without making a giant mess. Now here you can see we have main jet one, main jet two, and your power valve. So not to damage the finish on this or anything, I'm gonna use a small pry tool. 
I'm gonna break my small pry tool trying to get these off. I've noticed these gaskets get stuck a lot. Now, my previous carburetors and my previous gaskets did not do that. There it goes. Now I have an entire drawer filled with Holly stuff. So here is the screwdriver to take out the jets and then my jet kit. Now on these jets, it's gonna be labeled what they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a tool from Holly to take them out. You can use a flat plated screwdriver, but this makes it a little bit less risky so that things don't break or fall out. Holy crap, they're in there tight. Okay, so both are now loose. So I'm gonna take both 71s out. You know, if there's any chipping or any damage to them, I usually just throw them out. They're so cheap, you can replace them. But I, these ones are okay. That's one of the reasons why I like this tool. Okay, so there are actually 74 jets in that. So I'm gonna drop the 74s in, go up three, so 75, 76, 77. I'm gonna pull two 77s to put in the carburetor. Now this kit's extremely useful to have, especially if you're gonna be doing tuning yourself or else you're gonna end up just buying a ton of different jets. And this, it's nice to sort them this way. Now, I always jump up a few sizes because there is some variability in how the car runs. So going up three sizes is something safe. I'm gonna be trying to check this out, how it works. So I'm gonna start these by hand. Now I'm gonna tighten them all the way, the rest of the way with the tool. You can see the jet there, there's a slot in it. This tool actually has a small slot or something to fill that slot here, as well as a hole to center it. So that will go inside and then hold it in position. So you can push it in and there you go. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it less of a chance of stripping it. But one of the things I've noticed is you know, a lot of these have been so tight that it's actually started to bend this tool a little bit. So the tip of it is getting bent when I'm taking these in and out. Now, if we're gonna replace the power valve on it, now's a good time to, while we have this off the car, I think I can reuse these gaskets because everything still looks fine. Uh, power valve, take this off, retorque it. There is a torque spec for this, so you need to make sure that you get the torque spec right when you put it back in or else you could have a chance for leaking. And now we're good to go back on the car. Going back on the car, I'm gonna drop this in place. The pins are there, so it should hold it in place while I get the float assembly. I'm gonna put this in. Now all these need to be tightened down, so I'm gonna do them to the Holly specs or the brawler specs. For this, it's 25 to 30 inch pounds. I have this set somewhere in the middle for 28. That's tight. Now essentially that's as easy it is to tune this carburetor or any carburetor. So after you do that, you're gonna take it out for a drive, see how everything's performing. Did you make sure everything's going in the right direction and that what you were seeing is fixed? So I'm gonna end up taking out the car for a cruise, seeing where I'm at, probably go to a show because there's a few going on this weekend. So thanks for tuning in this week to Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next time.